Okay, let's look at the Photoshop workspace. So, starting out, when you open up Photoshop, this should be close to what you are seeing when you first lay eyes on your workspace. Um, we have kind of this black de desktop that's back here. You have a toolbar that's over on the left-hand side. You have an options panel, which is up here, and we'll talk about that in just a second. And then you have a series of windows that are along the right-hand side here. Um, don't worry so much about the top area of this, but we will be talking about this layers panel in just a little bit. So, starting out, in Photoshop, this is just the workspace, and it doesn't do you a lot of good until you actually have a document to work on. So in order to do that, we need to create either a new document or we need to open a document. Those are our two options in order to be able to work in Photoshop. So when we're opening or creating new documents, we go to File, and we can either do a new document, Command-N. Notice that all of the keyboard shortcuts for any of these uh, commands are over here on the right hand side. So if you look down at your command key on your keyboard, you should see this little flower symbol. So that's what this means. It means command N is the keyboard shortcut to create a new document. Or we can command O, open a document. So this is if we had a picture of a flower and we wanted to change the color of that flower. So we might open that image to work on it. But we're going to go ahead and start out by creating a new document. So you can either click on that here or hit Command N. So we get the option of setting up our, the size of our document and titling our document and setting up a few other parameters as we are opening it up. So I'm going to go ahead and title this new document. We'll get into some better names as we move on throughout the year, but this is a good start. Um, and Notice that our preset is currently custom. If it's not set to that for you, you can click here and set it to custom. Now these presets are just different kind of common sizes and settings for things like US paper, international paper, um, websites, different things like that. So we don't need to worry about that right now, so we're going to set this to custom. Now, we have a width and a height and a resolution. We need to set those ourselves. So your width, has different dimensions that can be used. Um, pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, picas, and columns. Now, right now, some of those may, have, may not be familiar to you, and that's fine. We're going to stick with something super familiar and choose inches. So go ahead and choose inches. And we're just going to go ahead and create a 10 inch by 10 inch document. So you may need to change your um, measurement to inches for both of these. Now, we also need to have a high resolution image, and resolution just means how clear that image is going to be on your screen. A high resolution is 300 pixels per inch. So go ahead and type in 300, and that should be pixels per inch, not pixels per centimeter. Our color mode, we're not going to talk too much about that right now, but you are fine if you keep your color mode in RGB or CMYK. Either one of those is fine. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and hit OK, or you can hit Return. And here we can see our 10 inch by 10 inch document. Now, I already know this is 10 inches by 10 inches because I set it up that way, but you'll also notice that I can see these rulers up here that show this measurement. It shows that it's 10 inches, and over here on this side shows it's also 10 inches. If you don't see those rulers for yourself, you can go to View, Rulers, or command R and see or hide those. All right, so now we have a document that we can work on. Notice that your document, when you have a new one, it shows up in a tab up here. You can have multiple documents open, and as you open a new document, you'll get a new tab for each document. Now I can go ahead and start using some of these tools on my document. So if I look here, one of the easiest tools to start out with is the brush tool because it's kind of an obvious tool in the way that you use it. So I'm going to click on the brush tool. Up here in my options panel, I have options for how to use this tool. Now that changes with every tool that you click on because every tool is going to be used differently. So here I can change just the way that that tool functions by adjusting my options up here. 
So for the brush tool, we have some different options. We can choose our size. If we click in this little panel up here, we can choose our brush that we use. So here I could use a decorative brush like a leaf, or I could just stick with something simple. Adjust the size, adjust the hardness, and that just means how hard the edges of the brush are. So here at 100%, if I click and draw, you can see the edges of that brush are really hard. If I go to 1% and I click and draw, you can see that that's more like spray paint or it's a really soft kind of look. So you can adjust your options there. We can play with modes, but don't. I wouldn't do anything uh, with those just yet. I would go ahead and keep it in normal. You can adjust opacity, and all opacity is is the transparency or the opaqueness of whatever you're painting with. So. Um, here, if I do a 49% opacity and I draw, you can see that that's kind of transparent. Um, I can take it down even farther, draw through there, and it's almost just barely viewable. If I take it back up to 100, then that's 100%. Now, notice I still have that kind of fuzzy edge because I'm using a soft brush. But if I take that back up and draw, then that's a nice crisp edge. Now, notice that everything I've been doing in this panel, you can also see in this background layer over here. This is my layers window. So here's my background layer. Notice that you can actually see these little green squiggles in that thumbnail in the layer. Now, if I want to, say, move these squiggles around and I go to my move tool here and try to move them, I can't do that. Now, I can't do that because they are stuck to that background layer. If I wanted to create something I could move around, I would need to create a new layer. And we create new layers in Photoshop by going to Layer, New, Layer, or the easier way of doing that is just by hitting Command, Shift, N, and then hitting OK. Now you can title these layers anything you want, but if you're okay with just calling it Layer 1, then just go ahead and hit OK. All right, so now I can see that I'm currently in a new layer. I can see that because I can see layer one here and it's all in this kind of blue color or the light blue gray. And the light blue gray is the cur current layer that you are working in. I can also see the color that I'm using on my brush. So I have this uh, set of two colors down here at the bottom of my tools. The top color is called my foreground color, and that is the color that I'm currently working with. So I was just painting with a green. If I want to change that, I can do it in a couple of ways. I can double click on that foreground color and then choose a different color just by kind of picking through this color picker menu. And I can get a really unique color that way. Or if I just want to use the swatches over here, I can just go through and click one of those as well, and that's fine. So if I go back now with my brush, let's change up something a little bit. Let's change the size, and I'm going to paint on this new layer. So there, I've basically done what I did on the background layer, but I've just done it on a new layer on top. If I go to my Move tool now, though, and notice I have show transform controls checked that'll allow you to see the little bounding box around whatever you drew I can now move this I can rotate it I can size it up and down I can warp it and then hit return so if you have a new layer for each thing that you're working on it gives you more flexibility in how much you can modify things Something else to notice with layers is every layer has an eyeball next to it. This eyeball will show you if the layer is visible or not. If I click on the eyeball, it will hide the layer. So that's kind of interesting too. The background layer cannot be moved. I can move this, uh, well, actually let me create a new layer so I can show you what I mean. I'm gonna create a new layer and just um, once again, do a little squiggle here. And now you can see those three layers in this layer window over here. And I can take this layer one and this layer two, and I can switch them back and forth. So here if I take 
that blue squiggle and I put it over the top of the purple squiggle. That is on the top of the purple squiggle because in this layer window over here, I have that layer on top. If I want to switch that, I just click on this other layer and move it on top and you can see how that changes. The only one I can't move is the background and that's because of this lock right here. And whenever you have a background layer, it automatically locks, but you can un unlock it very easily just by double clicking right on that layer, not on the uh, thumbnail, but right on this layer part, and then just renaming it to layer zero. So you can even just hit OK, and that'll do that for you. So now I could move this up and down and kind of modify that however I wanted. So um, one more thing I just want to show you is the type layer. If I were to type something like hello, Notice that over here in my layers window, I can see that that layer has a different thumbnail. So if you're in a type layer, it'll have this little T next to it. If you're in kind of these pixel layers, you'll see those different examples of what is on each layer. So go ahead and play around with your Photoshop. Um, get to know the tools over here. I would just pretty much at this point work with your brush tool, work with your type tool. If you type, click and drag to draw a text box, notice how the options menu changes up here for everything that you do. And remember, to create a new layer, you're going to do Command-Shift-N. One last thing, and I just thought of this because I noticed that when I drew that text box, this happened and I forgot to talk about it. Um, notice how just drawing a text box creates a new type layer. So even though you create a new pixel layer by doing a command shift N, you don't have to do that with type. All you have to do is click and drag. And now we can see I have three type layers there. So go ahead, experiment, try some different things and kind of get to be a little bit more familiar with the Photoshop toolbar and workspace and have fun.